Hello, this is Vic, and this is a special edition of Let's Get Blunt on The Blunt Post. Let's Get Blunt is a segment on my radio show on KPFK 90.7 FM, uh, but this is a special one on a topic that I've been wanting to talk about. Now, I have to give you a little background. I grew up in uh, a Barskahai family, uh, Iranian Armenian family, and uh, my love for Armenia started when I was three years old, when my parents took me to Armenia for three, uh, three months. Uh, and believe it or not, I do remember some of it, even though I was three years old. One of the sayings that uh, I would hear a lot from my parents, my grandmother, etc., was, was this. When, when someone had done something bad or disrespectful or whatnot, I would hear, um, uh, which roughly translates to uh, good or bad, at the end of the day, they're one of ours, don't say anything. And it basically um, talks about the symbolism of we don't want to say bad things or bad mouth one of our own uh, to contain things and to resolve it within ourselves. And you certainly don't want others to hear about your uh, drama within the family or greater family. So I grew up with that and I believed that. I also grew up in a family that was very supportive of the Armenian Revolutionary Federation. Learned a lot about it growing up as a kid. In fact, um, I read the book Zartung. I don't know how much of it I understood, but as a child, I was probably nine or ten years old. I would later reread it in English uh, when it was finally available. So um, we were very supportive of ARF and all of its efforts. And as far back as I remember, probably my late teen years, I was always a fan of ANCA, very supportive of their efforts as a, uh, an advocacy organization that worked um, on many levels uh, to help uh, with issues that are of concerning to the Armenian people. Now let's fast track to September 27, uh, 2020, which was last year, when uh, Azerbaijan and Turkey orchestrated a genocidal attack and ethnic cleansing uh, of Artsakh Armenians, also known as Nagorno Karabakh. I quickly had to sort of get into second gear and see what I could do on my level. A colleague of mine, uh, who is an entertainment publicist, uh, she'd been approached by a uh, TV network and production company um, asking her how they can help and what they can do to get uh, international and national mainstream media to cover what was happening in Artsakh. So uh, Nicole called me because she knew that I was an activist and I was Armenian American, very active in the community. So we, we talked and I came up with the idea of doing uh, celebrity PSAs. I figured uh, with the celebrities I've inter interviewed in the past and also Nicole's um, as a publicist, we can get some celebrities to do a PSA to bring attention to Artsakh and Armenia. And we came up with I Stand with Artsakh and Armenia uh, PSA. And we got to work and uh, we got uh, videos from Kim Kardashian, uh, Serge Tankian, Ed Begley Jr., Lawrence Sarian, uh, Congressman Schiff, uh, and a few others. And so, um, just so that, because I believe in supporting uh, organizations and supporting uh, people who are in this together as a team, uh, I thought, why not um, see if ANCA uh, would want to, uh, they don't have to do anything, but uh, we can give them all the traffic from that. At the end of the PSA, we can say, uh, for more information, go to ANCA, and then ANCA can direct them to uh, petitions and whatnot. So, um, I, at this point, I had interviewed Aram Hamparian, the executive director, uh, for my show twice, again, to support and promote and feature ANCA. I called Aram Hamparian and I said, you know, there's this opportunity, I want to just give it to you, you don't have to do anything for it. And he said, great, so why don't you work that out with uh, our Western Region Office, and put me in touch with Alex uh, Galitsky, the communications director. So we had this conference call, Nicole, myself, Alex, and two representatives, including the owner of the TV network, 
uh, about the PSAs, what they were going to look like, uh, how we were going to roll them out, etc., all the details. And so everything was ironed out. It was, everything seemed great. Everyone was in unison and in agreement. Um, and of course, the following few weeks when Nicole and I were producing the PSAs, we copied everyone on all of our correspondence just so that they are sort of updated and know what's happening. The PSAs came out great. We had uh, multiple networks and multiple entertainment websites um, play them. We had sent out uh, press releases. It was picked up all over the place. It was a really uh, a big success. But for whatever reason, uh, Nicole and I were sort of blindsided by an email that we received from uh, Alex, um, Western Region ANCA, that, um, that we had to clear certain things with the DC office before it was um, okay for that to happen, uh, which was a surprise because it was all cleared and discussed at the meeting, at the conference call that we had. And furthermore, um, on all the correspondence, Alex had been copied. In fact, both Nicole and I had tried to get in touch with Alex multiple times, uh, but to no avail. So there was nothing, uh, nothing that would have um, warranted that kind of an email. But for whatever reason, we assumed that uh, the Washington DC office of ANCA did not agree with something and uh, they sort of held Alex responsible and Alex in turn uh, made it seem like it wasn't cleared and discussed and approved, uh, which was very disconcerting. But the point was we're trying to help ourselves, so we moved along. Uh, after that, uh, I would no longer get uh, replies to my calls, texts, or uh, emails from Aram Hamparian. Uh, in fact, I was trying to interview him for a third time uh, to get an update about Artsakh. This is, uh, mind you, when the war was still happening. But uh, for whatever reason, uh, he stopped communicating. After several months of uh, doing advocacy work for, uh, on behalf of Artsakh in Armenia, I decided to formalize this work and launch uh, the Truth and Accountability League, or TAL, T-A-A-L. Um, and so um, I started to organize this, and at the same time, I uh, asked my friend Seppi Shine, council member Seppi Shine from City of West Hollywood, if she would sponsor a resolution uh, so that the City of West Hollywood would recognize the Independent Republic of Artsakh. Of course, Seppi did that, and uh, Mayor Lindsay Horvath, whom I've known for a long time, co-sponsored it, and that resolution passed unanimously in West Hollywood in January of this year. So. Um, after that passed, from that success, I decided that um, since the City of Los Angeles had already passed such a resolution years ago, and Glendale did so uh, just last year, Burbank would make sense uh, for a similar resolution since it has a sizable Armenian American community. So I wrote a letter, um, a petition request to the city council members of Burbank um, with background and information and links and similar resolutions, uh, etc. Everything that one would need in a formal petition. And I sent it to the council members and uh, other um, uh, top staff at the city of Burbank. And I received a reply from council member Nick Schultz. And so we also talked on the phone and council member Schultz was very uh, uh, supportive and um, said that um, you know, he supports it, he's going to uh, present it at the next meeting, and, uh, uh, and that I should also present it at the next meeting. Now mind you, my letter, my petition letter to the city of Burbank went in on February 3rd. This becomes important, the dates. So when I was speaking with Council Member Schultz, um, he mentioned that, he, he said, I'd like to let ANCA Burbank or Western Region know uh, about your request. Um, and I thought, okay, he's, he's a new young council member and he wants to uh, give respect to ANCA and just run it by them. And uh, me knowing that, um, you know, 
or at least assuming that AMCA would like it, there's nothing not to, you know, not to uh, be on the same boat with. I said, fine, you know, run it by AMCA. So he spoke with ANCA, and uh, next thing I know, on February 5th, two days after my petition was sent, ANCA sent their own petition, completely dismissing the fact that I had petitioned the city, uh, asking for the recognition of Artsakh. And so I was sort of blindsided and surprised that they did that, um, especially since I, as just one person, had been so supportive of ANCA and promoted them and tried to work as a team. Uh, I thought at least they would have called me and said, okay, we understand you uh, started this, you know, did this request and it's going to be sponsored by Council Member Schultz. Um, you know, is there something we can help you with or something? rather than completely dismissing and trying to diminish my work. And what followed was basically ANCA um, completely trying to take over and take credit for the work that I had done. Um, and trust me, it takes a lot of work and energy and follow-ups to get th something like this even noticed. And then you have to follow up with um, lots of materials and packages so that they know what to do. And Council Member uh, Schultz also told me on this, phone, on this phone call that he wasn't really um, too happy with ANCA because uh, apparently they hadn't supported him during his election, uh, but that he had, and I quote, he said that, uh, but I won despite them. Um, so I thought, okay, you know, whatever, that's between them. I don't know what the conversation uh, had looked like between Council Member Schultz and ANCA and City of Burbank, but uh, somehow my, my name was completely left out. And uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't very pleasant. I felt that, uh, you know, how we expect people to take initiative. We want every citizen to take initiative and to try to create change. But if an organization comes in and bulldozes them, what kind of message is that sending? So the next step was for me to make a presentation at the next uh, council uh, meeting, which was on uh, the 9th, on February 9th. So I, um, I did a three-minute uh, presentation to city council for why I had requested this resolution with some supporting material, etc. cetera. And, and so then we had to wait for the actual resolution to come uh, to be on the agenda for a vote, uh, which was set for March 2nd. So on March 2nd, the City Council of Burbank was voting on uh, the resolution to recognize Artsakh. And when the time came for people to call in to present, because I was asked again by uh, Council Member Schultz uh, to do a presentation, um, I was number 14 on the call. So before me, uh, the chair, of ANCA Burbank, Mr. Sarkis Simonian spoke, and he basically took credit uh, for the resolution, for bringing it up to city council, and that it was somehow ANCA's uh, uh, initiative, uh, petition, which I was sort of, again, you know, this was like the second time I was, um, you know, shocked that they would do that. They would try to take credit for someone else's work, especially since there's so much that can be done for Artsakh and Armenia in this very, really volatile time. There's so many cities and states and initiatives and work. Um, do they really need to take credit for someone else's work? You know, I understand that they probably felt embarrassed that they hadn't either thought about or taken the initiative to approach city of Burbank, although they have an office in Burbank, and that when I took the initiative, uh, they felt that they have to sort of make it look like it was theirs, uh, but it's really tasteless. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I was also um, raised, there's one more uh, saying that I learned from one of my aunts. Um, one day I went to my aunt's house and I was telling her about a family issue that I had not spoken about to anyone. She was the first one and she said, 
How come you didn't tell us? How come you, know, you didn't say something? We could have helped. And I said, you know, because it was a family thing, I wanted it to be contained and, and not sort of, you know, have other people talk about it and this and that. And she said, uh, which basically means that not talking about it doesn't help either. And that's what brings me to the reason why I decided to speak up about what Anka did. It's because who are we serving if we stay quiet? If we validate and if we co-sign people's bad behavior or organizations' bad behavior, who is benefiting? Because they are supposed to be doing all of this, and if someone is taking the initiative to do it, they should not take credit for it. And anyone, especially as a journalist, I think that my credibility will always be respected if I'm able to not just um, call out those that are over there and others, but also one of my own. Because if I don't, then I'm biased and then I'm validating someone's bad behavior. So I don't think that Anka's behavior was good, especially um, doing this towards someone who'd been so um, supportive, had helped to give them a lot of exposure by putting their logo on the stand, I stand with Artsakh and Armenia, PSAs, celebrity PSAs, uh, interviewing Aram Hamparian a couple of times, uh, and I would have done more, but uh, just bad behavior. And we do have a responsibility to call out this kind of behavior, because if we don't, it doesn't serve anyone. In fact, it is counterproductive to our mission to help Artsakh and Armenia, and it's our responsibility to say something. I'm happy to say that the city of Burbank, the council members unanimously voted to adopt the resolution and they asked city staff to write the final resolution on paper for the final approval, the copy, uh, if you will. But it's approved. Uh, essentially, city of Burbank recognizes uh, the independent Republic of Artsakh. So the end result, uh, it's good, it's positive, uh, and I'm very happy for that. My radio show is called The Blunt Post with Vic and my publication is called The Blunt Post because I believe in being very direct, honest, transparent, and sometimes even blunt. Uh, so there it is. Uh, you can go to thebluntpost.com for more and thank you.